This tutorial is going to go over the main pose-based retargeting workflow used for creating animation in Faceware Retargeter. At the most basic level, we're going to open up the performance file that was generated in Analyzer, create poses on your rig, and use those poses to generate animation based on the tracking. I'm going to be working in Maya, though the workflow is the same for each of the supported animation packages. I've got a scene that has our rig in it, but it has no animation on it, as you can see. And you can see that I have the Retargeter plugin open. First thing we're going to do is open a performance file. This is the .fwr file that Analyzer creates when you finish tracking a shot and parameterize it. We'll pull up the Open Performance dialog box by going to Performance and Open in your Retargeter plugin. From within the dialog in this first field labeled Performance File, we need to select our .fwr file that was created in Analyzer. If you don't have a .fwr and you've tracked, then you need to parameterize to create one. This is the file that's going to be used in Retargeter, not the FWT, which is your tracking file. So I have the one I want to use already loaded up on here, but you can hit the Browse button and then just select the appropriate file from your system. The second field is the Character Setup file, which is where you select the Character Setup XML that you generate during the Character Setup process. This process is detailed in a separate video and on our knowledge base, so please familiarize yourself with that before going forward. Again, I have the one I want to use but I can just browse to it using the button there. The third field is only applicable if you are using shared poses in your scene, which is a feature exclusive to the Studio Plus version of Retargeter. We're not using shared poses in this example, so I'll just make sure that there's nothing there. The other options are related to how Retargeter sets up your scene upon opening the performance. This first box, Import Video, will create a plane in your scene with the image sequence of your video that you can use for reference while animating. This is very useful and we will check it on. The second, Import Audio, does precisely what it says and will import the audio from your video, if it has any, into the scene. For demonstration purposes, I'm just going to leave this off. The third box, Set Playback Range, will change your timeline to fit the total number of frames in your performance, so you don't have to change it manually. And the final box on the left here, Set Frame Rate, will change the frame rate in your scene to that of your video. The Generate Autosolve box over here is only checked on if you're using autosolve and have created an expression set in your character setup file. We're not using autosolve in this tutorial, but you can find information on it in one of our other videos if you wish. When you have all of your options selected, press OK, and the performance will be loaded into the plugin. Now, in our actual scene, we're going to have to look around for the image sequence. The reason that you will have to look around for it, it's not always in the same place, is because lots of people create rigs at different scales. So you'll just have to find it, we'll grab it, and move it. So we have a handy reference when animating our character. There we go. Back in the plugin, you can see that we have the face groups that were defined in our character setup file. Like an analyzer, we're going to work group by group, one at a time, and start with the eyes. So overall, what we're essentially doing is mimicking the workflow in analyzer. Instead of creating training frames, we're going to be creating poses on the rig on significant and unique shapes so that the software can figure out how the face should move. Fortunately, because we already have the tracking data, we don't have to start from scratch and choose our own poses like we'd have to do with training frames in Analyzer. So we're working in the eyes, I've selected the group I wish to work in, and we're going to go down to this section called Auto Pose. Auto Poses essentially look at the tracking data and can tell you the best locations for adding a pose saving us from just scrubbing through the shot to find out. Like in Analyzer, the results will be their best when you start with as few poses as possible and add more gradually as you work. This will make it so that your poses are as good as possible and keep you from making too many poses that are very similar, reducing any jitter or confusion in the results. We're going to start with just a couple auto poses, so I will put two into this field here and hit the Get Auto Poses button. You can see that two poses have been added to the pose list here, and if I double click on one, it will take me to that frame in the scene. Now we've noticed that nothing on the rig changed. We still have to create the pose ourselves, but the software has given us suggestions as to where they should go. So we will pose our character to match the actor, remembering that we're just doing the eyes now, so we're only using controls that are in that group. So I will move this look control, and open up his eyes a bit. I'm just making these quickly for demonstration purposes. You're going to want to take time and make sure that 
poses you're creating are as accurate as possible. There we go. That's good enough now for our purposes. Now that we're satisfied, we're going to go over to the plugin, make sure our pose that we're working on is selected, and press the Update button. Pressing Update is essentially how you store your pose in the project. Now we'll do the same thing for this second pose. We'll take the eye control, move it up there. Open these up a bit, like so. That's good enough for now, so we will hit update and finish it. Now that we have a couple poses, we're going to retarget. You need at least two poses to be able to retarget. To do so, we'll go down here and just hit the retarget button. The time it takes depends on the complexity of your rig, the power of your computer, and the length of your shot. Now you can see, as we have one of the controls selected, that keys have been added on every frame of the shot, and that will be the same for each control in the eyes group. And you can see, as we scrub through here, we have some animation on the eyes. Now obviously two poses is not going to be enough, but you can see how each pose looks in the animation and adjust them if you so desire. If you want to change one, you could do the same thing. You go to it by double-clicking, you make whatever changes you want, and you hit the update button to store it. So from here, just like an analyzer, we're going to create some more. Instead of training frames, we'll create some more poses until we get the results that we're looking for. So I'm just going to grab two more auto poses. You can see two more have been added. And do the same thing. So this kind of blink. Close. That. Again, I'm doing a very quick job, obviously. The reason that we recommend doing only a few poses at a time is that if you happen to create a pose that's not very good, or it's giving you bad results, or is conflicting with another pose, you can easily find out which one it is. If you create like 10 auto poses at once, you'll have a very hard time figuring out which one is the problem pose and adjusting it accordingly. So we'll move that very far to the side and hit update. Now that we have these new poses, we'll hit retarget again. And you can see while it's still not exactly where we need it to be, our animation is starting to come along. So blink and look over. And you can see how adding your poses affects the retargeting results. It will eventually give you a complete animation. The process from here is going to just continue and repeat exactly what we just did. Add a few more poses, see what the results look like, adjust from there, repeat until we're happy with the animation, and then do the same thing for the brows and mouth. Every group acts exactly the same. So here we have a more or less completed shot, and I'll just hit play so you can see. We've got poses and retargeting results on each of the three groups, and you can see that, though I am not, by any stretch of the imagination, the best animator in the world, the animation is starting to come together pretty nicely. To get to this point, we've done exactly what I was explaining before on each group, getting auto poses, creating them, retargeting, and then adding or adjusting the poses to get a result that we like. As we look at the eyes, which is what we were working on before, you can see that I ended up with, it says here, and you can see in this list, 10 poses. Uh, there are 5 in the brows and 15 in the mouth. This is generally pretty representative of the ratios of the poses you'll need in each group based on their relative complexity. Uh, but it'll, of course, vary depending on the nature of the shot. If it, there's a lot going on, you'll need more poses. So let's take a very brief look at the other groups just to give you an idea of what kinds of poses we need to make. Like I said, the brows are the least complex group, so we only needed five here. I'll zoom in Oops. a little bit just to, so you can see better. And for the mouth, there are 15 poses. We've got neutral, different jaw positions and lip positions, phonemes, yelling, and then some Ones like this, asymmetrical poses, the ones that really add that layer of realism to your animation. 
Uh, you may have noticed as I've been talking here that these poses are mostly labeled. You can label a pose by double clicking it and here in the description column. This is really useful for keeping track of what you've done. So you could just label this, you know, look left or whatever suits the pose you're given. We recommend labeling your poses whenever you're creating them just to keep track of them. And if you're using shared poses, it can become very important to do so. There are some other tools and techniques for retargeting, but that's really the meat of it. Carefully creating and adjusting your poses will eventually give you great animation results in a lot less time than keyframing. One last thing to note is that this is where you'll also be making your creative choices as an animator. If, for example, you want your character to open their mouth more while making a certain shape, like we have this yell, or raise their brows or something like that, you can simply adjust your poses. So say I want to exaggerate this a bit more, I'll just open up his jaw, hit update, and now any changes I make will be reflected in the animation. You can also choose to add poses manually by moving to your desired frame. So let's say I wanted a pose on this frame for whatever reason, and I can just hit add and then say mouth partly open and pose it however I want and hit update just like you would with an auto pose. And again, that'll be reflected in the animation once you retarget again. This is how you'll really get the most out of Retargeter by combining thoughtful pose creation with your artistic decisions.